What is cranking wieners? Welcome back to Camp Claw. It's another day up here in Maine uh, and another absolute show. Here behind me, we've got my attempt to take the, the Razor off of the trailer so that we can get it ready for tomorrow's video. Tomorrow, the winner of the Razor contest, the Camp Claw giveaway, uh, is flying in from San Diego. And I thought I'd, you know, get the cover off. You can actually see the Razor now without that stupid black tarp. And we'd rip it around a little bit, just run it for a while, get some hours on it before we take it out and do some ice fishing, but the issue is, is it's mine. That's, it's the owner's issue, but the trailer is surrounded by an absolute fortress of snow. This is uh, all the snow that is right here. We actually tried to like hardcore jerry rig this with some um, winch straps. Tried to pull out with the LX470. Uh, guess what, that got stuck. Uh, like I said, that's my middle name, John Stuckby. And so we scratched that and we decided that we're gonna have to wait to shovel out all the snow. A plow is something that I probably should have invested in at the beginning of this year, but you know, it's way more fun to spend your money on stuff like this. Well, just back it off the trailer, right? Back up the trailer, you don't need to move the trailer. Well, that would be an ideal solution if this tree weren't right here. Uh, Alex suggested that we cut it down, which I was kind of thinking about, but honestly, I don't want to deal with that today. We've got a more important fishing mission to attend to. This is kind of like the part two of the video we filmed previous to this one, where we discovered that the Guggen Lagoon trout are still alive. And our goal and objective today is to get some more on footage, see how much they've grown. Maybe even like clip a few fins uh, for like tags, just so we know and can follow the growth rate throughout the year. And then if we're really lucky, maybe catch one. I don't know, we'll see. Yesterday they were coming up through the hole and swimming on top of the ice which sounds ridiculous, but I swear to God, that's what happened. Here's some video clips of that. Strike one for the razor. We're gonna have to deal with that after our trout mission, but I figured I'll let you guys know how it's going. And it's it's going as it usually does at Camp Claw. I mean, just look at this gong show. We've got the max tracks out, a shovel. We've got wind straps, a piece of wood under the trailer tongue, and a, a razor that is halfway on, halfway off a trailer. Anyway, all that set aside, stick with us, stay tuned. We'll meet you down to the pond and let's have a day. What are you doing, little guy? He's not even in a hole. Careful where you stop. There might be more. Oh no. Oh, there's one that just came up. That one died. That one's dead. Oh my god, there's a bunch of them over there. This isn't good. We need to save our little out. The pond, it got too melty and they. This is not good. Oh my god. Well, you guys, this is not what I anticipated. It really wasn't that warm today, but I guess it was enough to keep this hole open and then melt the water so these fish did what they were doing yesterday, but now they're getting stuck. This is one of our little trout. Let's see if we can save him. Don't wanna stress him out too much. It's okay, little buddy. This is the trout that we stocked. This is one of the 100 trout that we stocked this fall. He literally is trapped on top of the ice. I'm gonna get him back in the water. There's a few more, I think. Get back up. No, obviously not. Dude, this water came up so much. He just went down. This is bad news. This is ridiculous, dude. These guys, I think, are alive. Yeah, they're alive. What are they doing? <laughs> Why? They're on top of the ice. I think you guys don't realize how ridiculous this is. This is like, doesn't make any sense. These trout are so goofy. He's just trying to spook. I don't want to really spook them too bad. Down the hole, not around it. These little things are so goofy. Hey, Jimmy, get, <laughs> get back down there. What are they thinking? Down the hole! This is crazy. I've never seen like this before. I got, I'm literally going to have to catch them and then throw them down because they're being stubborn. All right. Get them this warm and warm. What the f is this one doing? Yo, I got you. No! He almost went down. I've not raised these trout well. They're goofy. They're being goons. We have one dead and three that we're trying to rescue, or four that we're trying to rescue right now. I don't think they know how to go down. And I'm gonna try to help them. I had this like fear last night that they were gonna do this. I was like, you know, if that water keeps rising, it may not be good. They may come up here and like permanently get stuck. There's probably more too that I don't even see. Look at this Jimbo. What are you doing, man? 
<laughs> this is cool. I mean, it's pretty neat to see them like this, though. It's like you have your own little petting zoo. Yeah. Just care for stuff. We need to clear off this. Uh, this is messed up. Yeah, this is not good. Also, you see how. There's one, I think. No. See how what? Thick that ice is. On top? No, on the, on the bottom, like underneath. It's thick. It's super thick. Some sort of minnow. That was yeah, a killifish. It's a killifish, isn't it? Yeah, so that's a killifish that we put probably stocked this fall or summer. Yeah. It's interesting. He didn't make it. I mean, we just, do we just let them do their thing? Like The only thing that we can do is, one, clear off some of the snow so that we can potentially find them. Or two, build a bigger... Not what I expected. It's not good. I think one of them might have got okay. down there because I'm swimming in my pond chasing the trout that we thought we'd catch today. Get back here! Hey, Jimmy! I'm your daddy. I'm trying to help you. I don't know if you know this. I know my big ass feet are probably intimidating, but I mean at some point these fish are just gonna get stressed out and die. Get the f over here! Watch me just go in the hole. There's one. Oh, oh. I think he's going to me. I think he's went down. Yeah. Yeah, he just went down. Yes, go, go, be free. You're supposed to live under the ice, not above it. Oh, what a idiot. Get down there. Oh, cool. There goes one. There's still another mystery one around here somewhere. He might have gone down this hole. Yeah, he could have gone down that one. I'm going to keep my eyes peeled up because when you leave, they come back, which is so crazy. I think we need to kind of get off the ice, go grab that shovel and come back. Clear this out. Clear some of this out. Dude, it's literally a foot of water right now. Like, this is ridiculous. There's no way we're gonna be able to ice fish today. This is, like, not possible. Okay, well, this counts as disaster number two for the day. This makes the RZR look like a walk in the park. Wow, not what I expected. Got the shovel, we're gonna clear some of this slush off just to see if there's any more, any more fish on top of the ice. It just sounds so weird to say. We also have to figure out a way to clog those holes that we drilled yesterday because I think that's what's causing the problem. I mean, obviously, that's the entrance point. It's so funny. We put the barricade in yesterday to save the fish in the springtime, and now we lost one because we're drilling holes. Didn't think that would happen. Look how much water is on top of the ice right now. It's easily like 10 inches a foot. Just melted a bunch of snow. This is terrible. Come on, buddy. Oh, I almost had you. Come on, I got you. I got you. Oh, oh sh Wow, look at the colors on it. It's beautiful. Wow. Here's my little baby trout. Here's my little baby trout. He's not doing so good though. I gotta literally stick my hand down the hole. Alrighty. It's right here. There it is. That might be a different one. No, it's a... Buddy, go down the hole. Let's try this again. Jeez, man. So we saved what? Four trout? Three trout? Four trout. Four trout. Now we gotta figure out a way to get this, these holes patched up because this is just gonna keep happening. Well, it's kinda sad to see this. Part of me thinks that maybe some of these trout got clapped last night too. You know, this is a perfect area for raccoons to come up and feast on these guys and they're super vulnerable. Like think about how easy it was for us to catch them. Unfortunately, there's going to be some moments like this where, you know, we lose a brook trot or two. It's so sad. I was hoping he'd be like a four pounder in the next five years. Well, time for the epic release. Yeah, he should swim off. It'd be good. You know, trotty. It's great fish. Really, you know, thrived. Uh, wasn't really one of his strong suits. Definitely wasn't swimming under the ice. Swimming above the ice was uh, one of his downfalls for sure. Um, but you know, he lived a he lived a good life. Uh, what was it? Four four months in the pond. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're gonna miss you, little trouty. I'll never be forgotten. Yeah. This is kind of a disappointment. In the last video, in the beginning of this one, we said we're gonna cut a big sight hole. And we're gonna watch the trout come through the hole, and we're gonna catch them. And it's gonna be sick. But I think for the sake of keeping the rest of what's left in this pond alive. Cutting a sight hole might not be the best idea because we're just gonna create a bigger 
space for these fish to come through the hole. What I am gonna do is quite the opposite. I'm gonna try to pack some snow and some slush over the existing hole so that this doesn't happen anymore. It also kind of concerns me that there's only a few trout that came up through the hole. I don't know how many more live in this pond. We only saw five yesterday, so. Maybe a lot of them were up shallow, which is kind of what I'm hoping, but it is weird that we only counted like five trout yesterday on the camera, and <laughs> we counted like five trout, one of which being dead on top of the ice, so. I don't know, might have to give uh, the old trout stocking guy a call here in a little bit. Say, hey man, uh, need some more trout. <laughs> because these ones are broken, they're defective. They like to swim above the ice, opposed to under it. It's all good though, guys, don't worry. I do have my receipt, so I can return these trout. Um, it's not the end of the world. Google Lagoon is gonna be a gong show and a half. It's supposed to get up to 40 next week. Wicked. This, I think we honestly skipped winter in Maine. Hence why I'm swimming on my pond right now in the middle of February. But you gotta roll with the punches. It's been a weird weather year for everyone. Texas, Maine, freaking all these hurricanes. Do you think that's covering the hole? Yeah, you just need to keep densing it down. I can't wait for all the marine biologists in the comments section. Well, you know, you probably shouldn't cut a hole if it, the ice is melting, blah, blah, blah. You're risking the lives of all your trout. Okay, whatever, it's my first time. I've never stocked or owned trout before. You live and you learn. I've never seen, like, I've only seen this, like, in the springtime when, the like, the lakes are melting. I've never seen it where it's, like, oh, middle of February? Yeah, there's about a foot of water on the ice. I could breaststroke in this right now, but I'm not going to do that because I, I don't want my nipples to cut di diamonds at the moment. Oh, no. No. See, I think there's more down here than we even know. You know what we can do is we can open these guys up and see what they're eating. That is one thing we can do. Damn it! So that's two confirmed dead. He looks like he maybe grew an inch, didn't he? Yeah. You guys also have to understand this normally does not happen. Like, I've fished this pond, I've ice fished this pond like two dozen times, not caught anything of course, but I've come out here and just pop holes for fun. I've never seen it do this. It's not like it's 50 degrees out. It's still like in the mid 20s. But I think this weird pressure system pushed a lot of snow or pushed a lot of water up through the through the holes that we drilled and unfortunately melted the snow which then created this nice soupy lake that really pisses me off i was really excited about these trout really didn't anticipate catching them with my bare hands wanted to do it on rod and reel first but it is what it is i'm gonna keep digging around and make sure there's no more alive or dead Ugh, what a mess. where did that one even come from Sticklebacks, also dead. It's weird that they came up through the hole. Uh, what did I say in my last video? Sometimes I'm my own worst enemy. Still holds true. Still holds true. Gone, but never forgotten. You played a huge role in the Google Lagoon. You may only live here for like maybe a month or two, but we salute you. Poor little things. All right, now let's go cut them open. Is this technically illegal? Like since these aren't legal size in Maine. Is the DNR gonna come knocking on my door? Hey, we noticed you kept two four inch trout. Uh, that's gonna be a thousand dollar fine. Uh, sir, no, actually, I didn't intentionally kill them. I'm just an idiot and did it on accident. Whoopsie. Uh, we, we have our little, little trout. We got D and ceased. And we're gonna open them up to see what they're eating. This will at least give us some information about the other trout that are left in the pond. What they're eating, if they're eating at all. This guy does look pretty fat, honestly. Oh, oh, here we go. Little tiny, oh, uh, you know what those are? Tadpoles? Those are leeches. That's a leech. Huh, they're eating leeches. It's not what I expected, I mean, it's good. There's a lot of leeches in my pond, honestly, too many. It literally looks like everything that is in this thing's stomach is freaking leeches. I was expecting shiners, minnows. Like trout are super aggressive, especially brook trout. Hot, look, this is the smallest leeches I've ever seen. Ha, huh. maybe that's a problem. But the fact that they're just eating leeches, I can't imagine leeches are like high in nutrients is what they need. Maybe they are, maybe I'm just talking on my ass, but I was expecting little insects. Maybe some shiners. Who's to say that maybe it's just these two little goofballs that are crunching on leeches and maybe the other ones aren't. But I at least wanted to check and see what these 
what these little brookies are chewing on. That's probably why we don't catch them on minnows. It's because every time we go there, we use minnows and they don't want anything to do with it. What they're eating is like very tiny, microscopic uh, northern leeches, which is kind of unsuspected, but now we know. I am goosed. I just cleaned out this whole snow bank. I think most of the snow that was plowed on my driveway was in front of the RZR. So this made for a really awesome experience. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get the trailer out just yet, but I at least am gonna be able to pop the trailer a little bit so that I can get the uh, RZR done and we can rip it around, make sure it's minty and ready to go for when Alec comes. Lucky! Just play dead. You straight out have to piss yourself. <laughs> you have to piss yourself, it'll deter them. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you, girl? She's lucky's learned a new trick. She uh, likes to scoot her asshole into the snow. I think it feels good for her. You know, the snow is it's nice and cool and lubricated. And sometimes wiener dogs, they got itchy assholes just like humans. And I don't know, I might have to try it. Yeah, I think you were supposed to come out here to do one thing, and that is to pee. And I haven't seen you pee, so go pee. Go potty. Let's go pee. Come on. Go potty. So what's the method behind this madness? I don't really know what the method behind this madness is, but it seems like it would work. I'm basically just gonna pop this thing out so we can roll the RZR. It just needs to get loose from all the snow. I did a, a half-assed job of clearing this out, but it should be enough. You're good? Well, that worked, like, really well. <laughs> Four max tracks is the move, I guess. Four max tracks is the move. I forgot how afraid of this thing I am. It's absolutely frightening. Let's see if we can do a donut. Beside the fact that this thing absolutely frightens me, it is like, it, it's one of the most fun side-by-sides you, you can you can own next to like a Maverick X3. I've never driven one of those, but oh, it's dangerous, but it's dangerously exciting. All right, well, she works. Knock on cheap Polaris plastic. None of the codes were showing up that I was expecting. Knock on cheap Polaris plastic, but she's good. She's ready for a, a nice rip in the next video when Al comes down and, and, and drives this thing, he actually races side by side. So he knows how to drive this, unlike I do. I'm just a goon. Um, but we did do some pretty nasty burnouts. Hell yeah. Finishing up, clearing this mound of snow so we can get the RZR back on the trailer. The Razor, sorry, sorry. The Razor back on the trailer. As I was shoveling, Alex reminded me that we kind of had a story to tell you. I don't know if you remember, but we caught someone hunting on the trail cams. These are the guys that moved the trail cam, I'm guessing. At night, too. Can you hunt at night? And a lot of you guys are saying, oh, you should definitely reach out to the main Department of Natural Resources, a main game warden. And I thought about it, probably a good idea, but at the same time, I don't have my land properly posted. I've got it posted, but not as much as I should. And from what a lot of you guys are telling me, that's kind of the way it is up in Maine, which I have a love-hate relationship with. I think it's good that Maine is allowing hunters to hunt all over the place, but I don't like that. You can just come on my property or anyone's property and just hunt and shoot. Anyway, long story short, we were driving, Kaylee called me, and I was like, there's someone at the door. He looks like a police officer. I'm like, oh, what did I do now? So basically, uh, the guy left his card. I called him back since I wasn't at the cabin, and this is how the phone call went. Jonathan, game warden Kevin Telfi. Thank you for calling me back. Yeah, sure thing. Hey, so I just, I stopped by because I, I saw you were up. Some of the neighbors had some issues out here last fall, and uh, dropped your name that they're familiar with you, so I'm guessing you may or may not know. you got a neighboring camp owner who was causing some, some headaches, just more or less hunting yeah. in areas you probably shouldn't have been. So I guess my question to you is, you know, I, I looked around a little after season and I'm just, I'm trying to figure out, Jonathan, what you had for issues of dealing with the guy and kind of where your property lies. I found 
two or three stands out behind your property and I don't know if they were on your property or not. I've personally never had a, an in-person um, issue with my neighbor, I believe his name is. He had come over probably summertime, just kind of wanted to introduce himself, talked a bit, kind of like admitted to hunting that land even before I had moved in there. I have reason to doubt that he, he had permission while hunting that land because just about everywhere okay. I, I saw, you know, this guy, it was, it was, 100% on the property line. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't hunt, but I just don't want people back there hunting because I've got two dogs. I'm back there. I know he hunts, but I know he was even out there this season. So um, I've got a propane tank and, you know, just a cabin in general. No, I, I understand completely where you're at. And they kind of had an issue seeing that you were up. And actually, I bumped into one of your neighbors. And he's like, yeah, that's him. He, that's the guy who owns it. So that's why I tried to stop it knock and chat with you real quick yeah i'm not gonna say i'm not trying to not get you involved the question to you is just more where was the area because state of maine if someone erects a tree stand they're supposed to have permission from the landowner to put it there yeah so if it's not yours it's someone else's and i'm just trying to trying to track down through that to see you know if, if there's any issues there i caught him once on the trail cam it was pretty far back but this past time he was on like three of my cams from this past fall and i've got one camera that has absolutely no footage on it and this is all speculation mind you but it literally looks like someone's moving right. it behind it like around the tree i don't know of an animal that could do okay. that um and no one that i know has been back there and i've not asked anyone to check those cameras so some of those stands are his too uh, that he's left even before I purchased the property. So he admitted okay. to doing that, and I don't know if he still actively uses those stands, but I don't know. So he has stands on your pro on the property you own now. Yep, and and I don't like I said I don't hunt. So I don't really care. I don't want him to use them, but he has admitted to setting up stands from either before the purchase happened when I took over the property or when the previous owners had lived there. So address that point. I mean, as a landowner. If you don't want them there, they're on your property, you can do whatever you want with them. You yep. can find some stands to get a little buddy or something. You can always be like, hey man, can you get those stands out of there? And if they're not gone by like June, I'm, I'm taking them I'm taking them out. I'm getting rid of them. I don't want them on the property. Yeah. If you want to, you're more than welcome to go with that. All I'm trying to do is, is understand what's going on and who owns what. Well, very good. Listen, uh, if you, I don't know if you're up for the winter or up for a weekend or whatever, but enjoy your time up here. And uh, again, I think I thank you for your time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin. I appreciate the call. All right, John. We'll talk to you All later. Right. Take care. Bye. Yeah, this is such a weird situation because it, I'm, I'm like 90% sure. I mean, I've met my neighbor before. He seems like a nice guy, but maybe any information I can give him will help him will help straighten things out, whether it be just a misunderstanding or something that actually needs to be looked into. Uh, but that's cool. I thought maybe I did something wrong when the warden came knocking on my door. Actually, I'm not home, so I just saw it in the ring, and I'm like, oh, what'd I do? Uh, <laughs> but no, I'm 100% legal. All my sleds registered. Alex and I both have fishing license. How big was that brookie we caught today? Oh, it's nine inches. Nine Definitely inches. big enough, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, long story short, it looks like it's gonna be looked into. I'm fairly indifferent. One thing I need to do before contacting a game warden or reaching out to anyone is I need to post this land. I don't want anyone hunting back here unless I know. I don't care if a friend hunts out here, if a neighbor hunts out here. I just want a heads up. I want someone to be like, look, I'm gonna be on your land between you know 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, on this date, okay? And I'm gonna be hunting in proximity to your cabin. That's cool, that's fine. There it is, I, I knew you guys were concerned for me and I appreciate all the comments and the messages. You guys were uh, were very helpful and teaching me how it kind of goes up here, which is something that I didn't know. Every state's different, you know, Texas, it definitely doesn't fly in Texas. Maine is a different state uh, and a whole, whole, nother, whole nother set of rules. Anyway, I'm gonna finish Clearing out this mountain of snow, wish me luck. You guys should be excited for the next video because we're actually gonna take your razor fishing. I don't think that's ever really been done before or filmed. Uh, and I'm very excited to have Al come here and literally show me how to use this tool that I've had for quite some time. But anyway, we're peace and out, signing out. Thank you guys so much for watching yet another Camp Claw video. Uh, be sure to subscribe, comment, and like. We'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, folks, keep fishing, never stop.